I don't really want to follow that. But. So uh, it is still in the new year, a uh, fresh start here. Um, it, there's different thoughts when it comes to New Year's resolutions. That some people make them every single year. Uh, they sit down, they plan out exactly all the aspects of their life, exactly what they want to do. But then there's the other side that they never do it because they know they're just going to fail by January 2nd. And, and th th there's just two different uh, thought processes here. Um, but, but one thing I think that January brings every year, it, it just brings this opportunity to, th to think about our lives, look back at the past year, think about what, what could we change, even if I don't necessarily make a resolution, you know, what, what adjustments can I make in my life? And, and I'm, I, I just love January and just that, that new beginning, the freshness that's there. And, and, but one thing we need to realize is that we don't need to just leave it to January 1st uh, to be able to, s to make adjustments and to start new. But we have the chance for a fresh start every single day. Uh, but I'm thankful that we, we're all at least on the same page of we're thinking about life. We're thinking about how we want to live our life. We're thinking about how we want to take care of ourselves, but we're also thinking about how we want to uh, impact the people around us in our relationships. Uh, and that's exciting because I think when we're talking about Christ and we're th talking about God's love and, and the life that he desires for us, uh, it's, it's about life. It's about our lives and what we're going to do with them and what kind of impact we're going to make in this world. And this is a day, it's Sanctity of Life Sunday, and Sanctity of Life is all just about the state of being holy in our lives, living out a highly quality life uh, that is holy uh, in God's eyes. And this is just a great day for us to get back on track uh, to the sanctified life uh, that we are called to. And as I think about the lives that we have as followers of Christ, I think there's something that separates us uh, from maybe some other people. And is that, it's, a, it's this message of hope that we have this wonderful message of hope that we have for the rest of our lives here on this earth, but also the hope for eternity and what that brings. And, and we have the opportunity to, to get back on track and live out our lives as if there really is hope in our lives because we do get bogged down with just the pressure of this life. The, we get so distracted. But, but a hope from today and onward that we live out a life that's just full of this hope uh, that we see in our futures. And we get to, and we, the great thing is, in the book of Revelation, we get to see uh, what heaven will be like. Maybe not in its, in, in its entirety, but we, we get to see a little bit, a little segment about what it's like. And it's in Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 through 5. It says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will. Will, dwell, will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who, has, who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And that's the hope that we're able to have, that one day all the pain that is here on this, on this earth will be swept away. There will be no more death. There will be no more brokenness. And that's the hope that we need to hold on to daily. Remind ourselves of that, that we have this opportunity for this eternal life in God's presence, free from pain. And what a wonderful promise that is. But, but there's, there's a part in there that, that might remind us of something when it says in verse 3, that and God himself will be with them. And, and that should take us back uh, to the book of Genesis when, we're, when we think about creation. And, we, and, and Adam and Eve were able to be in the presence of God. That people were with God in his presence. And we think about it too and we're making this comparison that in the beginning there was no pain. There was, there was no plan for death. The life that God intended for us was free from pain, free from death. But as, as many of us know, that, that quickly uh, turned in a different direction. And we're actually able to see when pain was brought into this world uh, through Adam and Eve disobeying God. And it's in Genesis chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And to the woman he said, 
I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will, be, you will give birth to children. Your, des your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. So we see here, our life right now is bookend by two times when there is no pain, when there is no death, when we're in the presence of God at the beginning and at the end and one day forevermore. But we find ourselves here in the middle. We find ourselves in a life that is full of pain, that is full of tears, that is full of mourning. And there, there's great aspects to life too. There's, there's peace and joy thrown in there too. But we're in this middle ground, this battleground, where one day all this stuff will be swept away. So, so what do we do with that? If, if we know that at the beginning we were in God's presence and there was no death, and that's the same one day and forevermore, what, what are we supposed to do in the here and now? How, how can we bridge that gap and bring creation and heaven? How can we bring those things closer together and, and, and kind of maybe get rid of this middle ground a little bit more that we're in? And I think as followers of Christ, as people who have this hope, I think we really have two tasks uh, while we're here on earth. And the first is what we call discipleship. That when we give our lives to Christ and, and, and we're, we, we repent and we're baptized, we're called to disciple others. We're called to bring others into a relationship with God, with Jesus. And that's something we should be actively doing day in, day out, as best that we possibly can. Uh, that, that this hope that we felt in our own lives that, that made us want to be baptized, that we, that we want to share that hope with others and help them know that there's something more, that there is this relationship with a God who loves us. And that if they've already said that we can help them out, just keep them going, just keep being an encouragement to them. I think that's our first task. And our second task is, I, is what I believe is how we accomplish the first. And that's to give others a taste of heaven. To help them experience this life that is promised to us one day. That the promise of no pain, no mourning, no crying, no tears, no death. That we need to be bringing that to this world, into, into the lives of the people around us. And I think when we think about how do we follow that, how do, what example should we follow with that, I think looking at Jesus' life is just the perfect example of that. That Jesus was, was somebody who was constantly trying to bring people into a relationship with God. And he was trying to heal people. And that's exactly what he did. That he, he healed the blind man. He, he allowed him to see uh, the people who couldn't walk, they, they would run and jump for joy. And he even conquered death. That Jesus was all about making sure that this world was as much like heaven as it possibly could be. And we see that in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. And this is, this is the Lord's Prayer. And this is something that many of us know. But it starts with, uh, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, that, that was Jesus' prayer, that this world be like it is in heaven. That's, that was his mission. That's what he strove for day in, day out in his relationships with the people here on this earth. That he wanted this world to be as much like heaven as it possibly could be. And his actions back that up. When, when there's the promise of no more death and Jesus conquering death, and, and I, think, I think we need to keep going with that and keep following his example. And in John chapter 14, verses 12, uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he says, very, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father. That Jesus is actually passing the torch onto us. At first the disciples and just onward and onward and onward. And the torch is in our hands now. In this world, in this time, in the city of Livonia and the surrounding areas, that we have this torch of the message of hope of bringing heaven to earth. That that's the task that we have in this moment and in, 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 in this time. However, 
there's this thing that tends to get in the way, and, and it tends to make us get off track uh, from this mission, and that's the sin that's in this world, and the sin that's in our lives. And before, and before I go on with sin, I, I want to make sure that we have a good understanding and that we need to change the way we think about sin. Because I think when we hear sin, and we hear, you're a sinner, you hear, I'm sinful, that we get really nervous and we get scared and, and we're very uncomfortable with hearing the word sin. It's almost become a bad word uh, in this life and in the, in the church even. And, and, but we, cause it's because we associate it with words like, we're dirty and we're gross. And that and I'm a sinful person, so that just means I'm no good. Or that there's this sin in my life that I keep trying to overcome, I keep, keep trying to overcome, but I just can't. And we, and we feel like a failure. So we start to associate sin with these type of things, that we're no good, that I'm worthless. And if, if we look back at, uh, in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew text, uh, sin was actually more so just talking about missing the mark. Just, just missing the mark of what God desired for us. That, that if this is a life God, God desired, and we have the opportunity to bring heaven to this world, to get rid of pain in people's lives, to wipe away their tears, and to avoid death as best that we can in each other's lives. And, and, and when I say death, that, that isn't just physical death, that, that's spiritual death. That we need to be actively in each other's lives to avoid the spiritual death that can occur. But missing the mark right here, that this is the life God desires for us. And, and I believe Jesus was right here at the bullseye day in, day out. He was in God's presence. That was his mission. But unfortunately, we're over here, and we're looking at this, and, and we, might, we might toss it in there, and we might land just, just any, anywhere on the dartboard. But in the, and truthfully, some of us aim at it, and we just like throw it way over here, and we miss the dartboard entirely. That, that we're, we're missing the mark of what of the life that God desires for us. So change the way you think about sin. Realize that you're not worthless, but we're just we're missing the mark of what God wants for us. And I want to make sure that I'm not trying to make this too light because sin is a very real thing and, and, and sin is scary because it brings pain into our lives. It's missing the mark that causes pain to occur in this world, that causes death, that causes mourning, that causes suffering. It's missing the mark that causes that. So even though sin doesn't make us worthless, it does have its consequences in the here and now. And that's one thing that we need to realize, and that's one thing that we, why we need to be aiming at this target and aiming at the center of this target, of, of God's will for us. Because when we do miss the mark, we don't just affect ourselves, but we're affecting the people around us in those times. And and, and, and I have a fear that sometimes that we, we approach this here on Sunday morning, we're looking at it and we worship and we sing great songs of praise and that we're in prayer and we take communion and we're looking at this and say, okay, well, this past week I might have been a little over in this section and I'd like to get back more into the middle. Or maybe, maybe I was just off the dartboard entirely. And, and I fear that that's where we are. But my biggest fear is that after we leave here on a Sunday morning, that we don't, we're not just missing the target, we're not just missing this target, but that we actually have our backs turned from this target and that we're looking at other targets that this world has to offer. That, that we, we look at our jobs and we say, I want to be more successful, and, and we're looking at this career and this money target. We say, oh, if I can just be at the center of this target and, and get more money, I'll be able to do whatever I want. That I'll be able to get all the newest and best things. And during, and during the week, we have our backs turned to the life that God wants for us and we're so focused on this target. Or there's another target where, where you just want to make sure that you get your way all the time or I get my way all the time. That we want to be right in every situation. That, that, that we just want to make sure that our life is as easy as possible. And, and there's another one, and, th and this is the one that I struggle with the most. It's, it's the target of comfort. The target of comfort. That we just want to be able to just go home sit on the couch and relax. That we want to live as comfortable a life as that we possibly can. That we, we, we do want to avoid pain, and, and, and that's not a bad thing per se, but when we're, when we're avoiding this target and getting into the life that God desires for us, 
you know, we're, we're, we're missing the mark entirely. We're aiming at the wrong target. And that's just a question for you, is what are you aiming at Monday through Saturday? Does, does that look different than it might on a Sunday morning or Sunday night? And that's a question that we all have to answer for ourselves, is what are we aiming at Monday through Saturday? Uh, and, it, and it's important to realize in this situation, too, that the closer we are to God, the higher chance we have of repeatedly hitting the bullseye. The more we're in God's presence, whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night here, but it's not just that. It's having your Bible open daily. In the morning, when you go to bed, just throughout the day, it's being in prayer and actually talking to him every single day of the week as, as best that you can in every opportunity. That the closer you are to this target, the better chance you have of being at the center of it, the easier it is. Because when you stand back here, and you might, you might be wanting this target, but if you're not in God's presence, it's a lot harder to, to throw our lives into that target and hit the center. The, far, the farther we are away, the harder it is to be at the center of what God wants. That's why we need to bring ourselves into his presence and not miss the mark, but be right here and hit the center. And, and I do want to give a word of warning, however, that when we are here, when we are trying to live our lives at the center of this target, you know, just trying to ignore those other targets, comfort, money, success, being right, being, being entertained, that if we're at the center here, things are going to be messy. Things are going to be messy. That we might have people in our lives who don't understand this life. And it might hurt some relationships because they, they're trying to understand why in the world you even believe in God. And, and, I'm, just, and I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to live this out, but these relationships are so, they're hurting right now because I'm trying to live this out and they don't understand it. Or also, when we're at the center of the life God desires for us and we're living this out, that means we're in each other's lives. And with the pain that's in this world, we're, we're experiencing the pain with each other. We're sharing our messes with others and they're sharing their messes with, with us. And it's just messy. We know each other's junk. But we're trying to bring heaven to earth in those relationships. So we need to be here in his presence, but knowing that it's going to be tough. It's going to be messy. But we have a great responsibility and a great task to bring heaven to earth and to try to help people get, get over some pain or just ease the pain. Just a word of encouragement. We don't, have to, we don't have to get rid of their pain entirely. If we can, that's great. It's a word of encouragement to ease the pain that's in their lives. Help them experience the love of God. Help them experience heaven. And just as I think about this whole messy situation, there's, there's, there's a situation uh, from one of my favorite uh, movies, and it's Star Wars. Uh, there's, it's at the beginning of episode four, where we have R2-D2 and C-3PO, uh, they're on the ship, and, and Leia, Princess Leia has given R2, you know, some plans, a message for Obi-Wan. Uh, and we see that they're on the ship, and they're walking down this hallway. I'll try to do the C-3PO walk. They're walking down this hallway, and lasers are just going past them left and right. And it's messy, and it's dangerous. And, and they're, they're, their lives are in danger. And, and there's, a, there's a moment when they get in a, an escape pod, and they're shot off, and C-3PO and R2-D2 are looking back at the ship, and C-3PO says, that's funny. The damage doesn't look as bad from out here. He's saying that if, you, if we're removing ourselves from each other's lives and the lives that God intended for us, it, it's, it's going to feel safer. Things won't look as bad when we're not in God's presence. Things won't look as bad when we're not in each other's lives. We will be safer. So the, so the question is for you guys and, and myself, is do we want to be here? Do we want to be where the battle is happening, or do we want to jump in our escape pod and just float away and just, just observe it from a distance? And that's a question we have to answer. So just as we're thinking about this message of hope this morning uh, and bringing heaven to earth with our lives, uh, the, the band is up here, and they have a wonderful song that they're going to share with you to just keep that uh, message of hope going. <laughs> 